Hello everyone. Now let's begin this session. This session is on standard essential patents and FRAND licensing. My name is Sandil Kumar. I'm from ABB. I head the IP department in ABB. Let me start with brief introduction to the panel members. We have a very rich experience in our panel. First, let me start with uh, Patrick Keen. Patrick Keen is he is managing director in Buchanan, Ingersoll, and Raleigh, based from US. He is a general practice uh, uh, law firm consisting of over 500 uh, attorneys and government relations professionals in offices across 19 cities throughout the United States. Patrick is active in Federal Circuit Bar Association, serving as co-chair of uh, the Regional Program Committee and as a vice chair of the US PTO Committee. In 2013, IAMs patent 1,000 publications recognized Patrick and noted that he has a strong foundation in all areas of intellectual property and does a fantastic job no matter what he focuses on. He's a dedicated, he's dedicated, resourceful, and skilled IP strategist and a creative problem solver. In addition, Patrick is recognized for his work in uh, the intellectual property practice as a two third 2013 and 2014 IP stars by managing intellectual property. I've known Patrick for uh, several years. We have, we have worked together on uh, largely on patent cases, and it's nice to have you, Patrick, here on uh, on this session. Next, S.K. Murthy. S.K. Murthy is patent counsel for Intel India. S.K. Murthy has exposure to Indian and U.S. patent laws. His primary interest areas of focus are patent preparation and prosecution, training engineers professionals on uh, basics of patent law, providing opinions on patentability, and such other patent-related issues. His interest also includes developing strategies for inculcating, developing, and sustaining IP cultures and patent management. Is presently employed with Intel Technology India Private Limited as a patent counsel. Now, S.K. Murthy, uh, many of you, of course, would know S.K. Murthy also as core committee member, the founder member of uh, IHIP, in house IP uh, professional uh, forum. And uh, in IHIP, uh, with our quarterly meetings, uh, we have tried to reach many IP professionals in India and have very active discussions uh, on uh, many areas of IP. Next, I introduce Dr. Sheetal Chopra. Dr. Sheetal Chopra is uh, India lead IP advocacy, IPR policy and communication for Ericsson India. She is responsible for establishing and driving Ericsson, Ericsson's position in discussion related to patents and patent li licensing, such as the current IPR uh, policy debates in standard development organizations, policy forums, etc. She has corporate responsibilities for ad advocating Ericsson's view on these issues to regulators, policy influencers, and policy makers in India. She is serving as a guest faculty trainer in various premier governmental and non-governmental institutes, institutions, besides serving as an eminent speaker in various forums on diverse IP issues. Next, let me introduce uh, Sanjeev Tiwari. Sanjeev is a uh, partner in KNS uh, Partners. 
Sanjeev leads the patent and design litigation practice at the firm. He specializes in enforcement protection and dispute resolution in the area of patents, design, plant varieties, and biological diversity laws. Besides, he also handles transactional work, including technology transfer and licensing agreement. He regularly renders opinion on the validity and enforcement of patents and design freedom to operate, infringement analysis, and due diligence apart from managing patent portfolios of clients. Let me now introduce Biju. Biju Nair is an independent legal practitioner. He represents Open Innovation Network. Biju is uh, the licensing lead Open Innovation Network and is a litigator having worked in various jurisdictions uh, across India. His area of practice extends from corporate and commercial law, arbitration and dispute resolution, property law, competition law, trademark and copyright and constitutional law. He works as a senior associate in the litigation department of Lutra, Lutra Law Office, Namarchand Mangal Das in New, New Delhi. Biju earned his law degree from Army Institute of Law in 2004, the member of Bar Council of Delhi, licensed to appear before the Supreme Court of India, all the state high courts in India. And, and now, Sai Deepak. Sai Deepak is associate partner in Sai Krishna and Associates. Sai Sai Deepak is an engineer turned litigator with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Anna University and a bachelor's degree in law from IIT Kharagpur. Sai has been a litigator with uh, Sai Krishna and Associate since 2009 and is associate partner of the firm. Sai has served a niche for himself in IP litigation, competition law, drug regulatory laws, indirect taxation, and economic offenses. He has handled multiple patent matters across technology segments, including pharmaceutical and telecom patents. Since March 2013, Sai has led the firm team which represents Indian mobile brand in standard essential patent litigation. So I welcome all the panel members. And before we start, just want to uh, mention how we plan our session. The, the two things that I want to say. First, we have uh, planned the session as three rounds. The round one will be what is SAP. The round two would be, we'll get into details on what's the present challenges what the issues we have, and round three would be a way forward. Or, so that's, that's the plan. And at the end of this round, we would have the question, end of this, uh, the third round, at the end, we would have this question answer session. So if you have any question coming up, please, please wait till the end. We would have 15, 20 minutes for question and answers. The second thing that I want to mention is, in this panel, we are representing on personal capacity. Unless a particular speaker is uh, mentioning uh, anything otherwise, it is uh, all the views that is presented as uh, personal views on this topic. I want to start with a brief, uh, I want to set the context. I want to start with a brief note on why standard, or what's the standard? Now the first, if I go back, like uh, when did I get introduced to the term standard? Then it's in the schools. The schools, the first of the things to uh, read was related with uh, very basic measurements. So I said, okay, we have a standard which will tell what's a kilogram or what's one unit of length. 
this, this, this was my, what I recollect as my first introduction to what's the standard. And here what I want to bring in is that why standard? With those basics, what I learned was that's a way in which we, we build scientific communication. If I want to say something about technology or science, and that to be understood by the other person in exactly the same manner, then we need to have a common, a common ground. And that is where the standards, is the first introductions of standards come in. Later on, like as I start uh, get understanding more, I learned that it's not just a specification or something like where we start saying, okay, look, it's for communication, I think. Start learning about, oh, there is a lot of technology involved. Even to say what's, what's one second time. There's a lot of technology involved to start defining as how, how do we have this measure of uh, whatever we claim to be a standard. So a standard, at the start, like, uh, it looked like, okay, there is a technical specification. You start paying attention. It also starts including technology. And the technology advancement starts refining the standard as uh, the standard of what's a meter existed uh, several like, uh, centuries ago. But what's a meter, if you have to define by the modern standard, there's a lot of technology that has come in. So the standards, the technology part in the standard definition starts uh, evolving as well. Now, when the other aspects related to standard is it lays a foundation in which we, we can build further. Once this technical specification comes in, once what technology starts coming in, once there's acceptance of that, like it's channelizing the energy, it's channelizing resources to further develop on. It's a structure that we start creating on the technology world by, by the definitions uh, included in the standards or accepting things as a standard. As we go on, like the whole process of uh, defining a structure involves making decisions, involves saying this we choose and this we leave aside. And here, the whole, uh, the way it gets set is through these decisions and choices, a certain path in the way we want to move forward in technology starts getting laid out. These technologies, what we talk about, if I, if I take measurements, testing areas, the, the technologies were like quite basic. The technologies are there, or were there like where it could be there for many years together. But in recent times, you see the technology changes so fast the question starts coming in is some of these technologies, what we have or what we start defining in our standards, these technologies may have patent protection. They may be protected by, they may be somebody's intellectual property. And this is, this is where SAP, as we call the standard essential patent, when this, this topic starts becoming interesting. This background, like, like to, uh, through this uh, conversation or questions with or interaction with the panel members, take into various aspects related with uh, SAP and the challenges associated with SAP. So first question, like uh, the question to Sheetal here is, Sheetal, could you briefly tell us, like, what is an SAP? Hi, everyone. Um, I know it's a difficult task to be sitting through the, until the last session, but we'll all try to make it as interesting as possible for all of you. 
before, I think you have done a great job in defining itself what standards are. And if I have to explain it in a layman's language, uh, these are the technical standards that have to go in uh, any of the device. Uh, I would like to give you my experience way back in 2006, 2005, something like that, uh, when it was the first foreign visit that I made to Japan. And I was carrying a cell phone, a very basic cell phone. And there, when I wanted to call my mom, I could not make a connection. And I had to purchase a phone from that country to connect back to my country. So that was the importance that standards threw to me at that time, that uh, the devices were not standardized and they were not able to connect to each other the moment you, you know, shift your position from one uh, situation to another uh, location. And also way back in 1980, uh, the situation was such that the telephone connections would take 10 years minimum for anybody to get a phone connection. And even after that, uh, phones will not work. It was because they were not standardized at all. So India understood the value of standardization since way back in 1980. It is only in uh, 2013 that formally India showed its uh, commitment to follow global standards so that devices could continue to talk to each other, they connect with each other, they perform in the same fashion no matter whether you are sitting in India or Japan or in any, any other country. So that's the value of standardization. And when we look at the uh, Digital India program, uh, where Government of India is giving us a promise that the time is not far where we will see smart cities. Devices will start talking to devices with least or no human intervention, right? A doctor sitting in the metro city will be able to guide the doctor in the tier three cities where he is doing a surgery. Everything is done electronically and digitally. And just consider that devices don't talk. What is going to happen to, this, to the patient? Uh, so it is in light with digital India. It is in light with making the life of the consumer easy. Standards are followed. Uh, almost in every sector, standards are much in requirement, but in ICT sector, uh, standards have been the most acceptable form uh, ever by the human race. That's about standards. Now, just to respond to what you said is that the proprietorship on the standards, standards can never have a proprietorship. These are the open standards. And just to explain you, if there is a iron uh, with which we press our clothes, we iron our clothes, uh, there are safety standards which are, in, which are included and it says that if I touch and if there is a short circuit, you should not get a shock. That's standard, right? So nobody can have a proprietorship on the standards per se. It is the technologies which make those standards to function is a proprietorship. Is that what goes in the patents and that is called as a standard essential patent, an SEP. Thanks, Shritu. Patrick. I, uh, can you also briefly uh, touch upon on SAP and also on uh, this, like, who decides whether a patent is a SAP? How does it read on? Uh, how does a patent read on to uh, standards and become an SAP? Right. Okay, sure. Well, um, these standard essential patents can come around in a number of different ways. Uh, in different markets, technology evolves through different processes. So for example, I do some work in the military sector uh, on behalf of the United States government and its government contractors, developing new aircraft and things like this. In that situation, the military will set forth specifications, the guidelines for what it is they're looking for producers of products to comply with in order for it to accept to be acceptable to the um, United States military. So in the military context, a lot of times the standards are set by the contracting company. Um, it's not really a patent owner who decides, I'm going to develop technology that will be the standard essential, that will be protected by the standard essential patent. In many cases, the innovators have to respond to the technology requests that they receive to comply with certain specifications, like military specifications. That's one scenario. But there's a contrary scenario where individual inventors can innovate in ways where they're very visionary and they see the direction that a market is going or could go. And of course, in today's world, there's a great deal of convergence. And with convergence of technology, there's a great desire for interoperability. And interoperability can only occur, as Sheetal's saying, when you have some kind of standards in place um, that, that the, the general technology community uh, can subscribe to. So in these cases, uh, often what happens in, the, in this non-military context is that innovators who have the vision can develop certain technologies, and this is what happened, for example, in certain areas of the IEEE 802 
.11.15 standards for Wi-Fi or for Bluetooth um, or for standards that have become so omnipresent like Zigbee type less expensive standards. These were developed in large part by individual inventors who then patented them. And then the IEEE, uh, through its membership and through an agglomeration of companies, decided that these certain technologies might be very beneficial if they were adopted on a wider scale basis. So these inventors who were very visionary saw their patents become effectively standard essential patents. And then we'll move into what some of that, the challenges that that creates. But, um, you know, those are two scenarios where the drive for what became standard essential patents came in completely opposite directions uh, and led to, uh, you know, the creation of standard essential patents that were owned by individuals or individual companies, uh, but were the subject of origin either through the contracting agency versus uh, an individual. Thanks, uh, Patrick. Also want to add in here, there's another aspect like of technology development, like as, uh, at least as uh, uh, how I view it and I would like to share uh, here. See, at, f at first, if I look at it, one, a person is looking at developing, when you look at the products, I uh, think is developing a component or developing a product. But more and more, we are we are like uh, in our day-to-day -day, uh, thing. We are we are talking, not just product. We are beginning to talk about systems. And what is the systems that uh, is? Systems are going to be interconnection of so many products together. So, from one very specialized product, we start talking about now how this product would talk 